Yo, what's going on my people? Welcome back to the Live Capital YouTube channel where life is for the taking. It's the host himself, Ted Talk Money, coming back at you to tell you something. This time we're going to take a look at the latest BIS report that's really just been released and how it's going to be affecting the crypto market. My people, I hope you've been enjoying the weekend, the past 24 hours, because you know what you get over here? Yes, another 24 hours of blessings. Guys, we are stepping into a brand new week, okay? Okay. But today we're going to be welcoming in another episode of Lift Capital to your lifestyle. In this video, I'm going to be talking with you guys about the recent latest BIS report that's just been released. And really, we're going to see how it's going to be affecting the crypto market. I mean, for those that don't know what BIS is, it stands for Bank for international settlements and they're basically an organization that represents all of the world's central banks so without further ado let us get started uh, right here, guys, as you can see, we're looking at our crypto global market cap right now. Now, of course, you guys already know if you are new to uh, crypto, coin market cap is more so like your major league of crypto. So if you have a token or a coin that you really want to get listed, of course, everybody wants to find that over here on coin market cap. They are notorious for hiding certain um certain values and certain digits but right here guys to really do ourselves a price check we have our bitcoin right here at 19.3 and our ethereum right here at 1.3 now if you are new to our channel we really do expose the truth so right now if you've been in crypto for maybe a week or something or maybe even a couple months you can see that you've entered into a crypto space with two two uh, coins that are kind of like a monopoly. Right now, a lot of people see it as Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the altcoin market. Again, if you're new to our channel, we really do focus on utility cryptos and ISO 20022, 20022, whatever you want to call it, ISO cryptos. So let's see who's actually done something in the past 24 hours. We see guys, Elrond's kind of up 5%, which is decent. I'm not sure if this is retail attention coming out from the uh, Panama News. Uh, that's that's most likely going to be revealed after November. If you guys don't know, Panama actually um, allowed for the Chosen 5 to be chosen for their basically no holds bar crypto bill. Long story short, you have XRP, XLM, XDC, IOTA, Algorand chosen uh, to be used as like legal tender over there in Panama. So do your own research on that. You have Maker right here up 5% and Uniswap for our ISO gang. Quant just continues to do something right here. If you were trying to catch that little bit of a dip right now, guys, as you can see, it's pretty much holding on a bit of a support right there. Let's go ahead and check into for the rest of our price action though. We have our XRP right here is 45 five cents down three percent still on the week guys if you've we're watching it how we had this huge pump and then you could see it's that that manipulation still now of course we're not at our 35 37 uh cent levels like we were last month but you could see that we are still on the rise there is obviously more and more suppression but attention coming to xrp let's see moving forward here to check out our iso cryptos our seller right here is at 11 cents uh your algorand right here at 35 cents quant is moving on up that is great he's really climbing the Ranks right here. Your quant right here at 138. Hadera 5.7. Uh, moving forward, IOTA's right here at 27 cents. Of course, if you guys don't know, Shimmer, Shimmer just recently launched out of there. And of course, you can still stake for assembly, assembly token. So for my IOTA holders, guys, go ahead and download your Firefly wallet and then you could stake all that IOTA for some free assembly. I believe you guys have about 20 days left, 20 days to to uh, get those free assembly. All right, and our XDC right here at 88, looking decent, up 3%, 3.6 on the week. Now let's get into it, guys. I'm sure if you haven't heard already, the SEC is coming against Kim Kardashian. Of course, we have to see what Scary Gary has to say. Check this out. Bruh. Oh, hold on, hold on. My bad. Let me get you guys the sound. Here we go. What's he asked to say? Celebrities and influencers often are endorsing a variety of products and services across television ads, social media, or print. On everything from clothing, diet plans, to perfumes. It catches our attention. We always wondered, did they use the product? Do they like the product? How much were they paid to endorse it? In any case, what does this have to do with the Securities and Exchange Commission? Bruh.
Sometimes celebrities endorse investment opportunities like crypto tokens or special purpose acquisition companies. Celebrity endorsements though don't mean that an investment product is right for you or even frankly that it's legitimate. Bruh. Even if a celebrity endorsement is genuine, each investment has its own risk and opportunities and may not fit your investment. Bruh. All right, enough, Furthermore, enough. I just can't do it with this guy. Can't do it. Just wanted to let you guys know that he was putting it out there today that they charged Kim K for unlawfully touting crypto securities. Look at this. No more crypto promos for Kim Kardashian rules the SEC. This is wild. So right here, guys, a lister Kim K will have to fork over one point six million to the SEC after she was charged with unlawfully shilling a dodgy token to uh, more than 200 million Instagram followers. It looks like last year, Kim K joined the forces of Jake Paul and Floyd Mayweather in promoting a crypto asset called Emax when she gushed to her followers, are you guys into crypto? This is not financial advice, but sharing what my friends just told me about the Ethereum Max token. She said a few minutes ago, Ethereum Max burned 400 trillion tokens, literally 50% of their administrator wallet giving back to the entire Emax community. This may have sounded great at the time. However, earlier this year, the token has shown to be just another pump and dump. Kim's promotion of Emax failed to properly disclose her involvement in the project, specifically a payment of $250,000 from Ethereum Max. The punishment, a three-year ban on promoting any crypto assets, a million dollar penalty and 260,000 in disgorgement. Guys, that's what I'm saying. You know, she has to fork over a million when she was only paid a quarter million to promote it, to shill it. Wild stuff, y'all. So right here, I thought this was mad epic for real. So right here, we've been promoting with you guys about XD crystals. Really important stuff, guys. So XD crystals, they've recently been, um, you know, Presenting raw amethyst as you guys can see real gems sacred gems legendary crystals are starting to come in for the sacred gem collection Once all crystals are in hand We'll start the KYC process and start shipping them out guys If you didn't know XD crystals right now has a collection over on uh, XDC uh, I believe yeah XDC and um Every one of those NFTs comes with a literal gem that's going to be shipped out to you. So this is epic. As you guys can see, this is uh, this is obviously Amethyst. Give them a follow, guys. We've been involved with the XD Crystals team for quite a while, especially since um, we've done an... Uh, Completely showing you guys that giveaway. Of course, big shout out to everybody that won our uh, gym giveaway. Good stuff. Uh, next up, I want to show you guys this decent wallet has now integrated with the near protocol. Really good stuff. I'm really glad to see another integration happen for decent near protocol. I think I'm going to be doing a more of a deep dive for our premium people. I've been looking into it myself. And I mean, when it comes down to just another layer one that's out there that's doing some things, I'm really liking um, their how how their their plans and how they uh, want to develop. So I want to let you guys know that near protocol has been integrated into the decent wallet. OK, um, decent wallet now supports near the native currency on the near protocol network, which is used for paying transactions, data storage fees. Decent users can now add near accounts to both their uh, biometric wallet and their app wallet as well, guys. So again, of course, more and more support that's coming to decent. If you're not if you're new to our channel, what we have in, is in the description of this video is a link so you can get yourself a decent wallet, of course, save yourself some money. We really enjoy our decent wallet over here because you have quite the uh, nice customer uh, customer experience. We've gotten a lot of positive feedback. So, of course, if you are new to our channel, just ask any of our people in our community how they've been feeling about decent wallet. And then from there, save yourself some money. OK. Now, next up for my XDC holders, really good stuff. So now we're seeing a new partnership here with Forward Protocol, Forward Protocol. So I'm seeing a lot more of these uh, applications coming about. You know, you have Fireblocks that's really allowing for uh, institutional adoption for digital asset ecosystems. So now Forward Protocol is excited to be making giant strides with Zenfin. Just so you guys can see a little bit more about what they're about. It's really similar, again, to uh, Fireblocks. It's a, a, you know, a network 
of networks, basically allowing any company or business that wants to become uh, involved in DLT. It's easy. The lowest barrier to entry, easy to use, open source, drag and drop. That's all you have to do. Just select an application from their repository. Choose the smart contract suitable to your purpose. Choose the blockchain that best fits your use case. Configure those settings in the forward factory and then deploy it right there guys and obviously this requires no technical knowledge and now they're saying that the Zenfin network is now uh, attached so really good stuff there really good stuff now this article came across the desk I just wanted to discuss this with you guys I'm not here to bear anybody's ETH bags okay it's the second popular smart contract crypto right the mother of smart contracts but there was a few points in here that I thought were quite interesting and how somebody can say Ethereum has officially died can it really be saved how is it possible for the second largest crypto to die? After the merge, people started to worry. Understandably so, Ethereum didn't just die, it committed centralized suicide. Obviously, this is an opinion piece from Liam M here, but look at this. The biggest misconceptions, a lot of people believe that the merge would reduce gas fees and allow users to withdraw staked Ethereum. That's not the case. The merge will reduce emissions and have triple halvenings, which is sim similar to Bitcoin's halvening. Here's the good, bad, and the ugly. Like most invested in ETH, they were waiting for the merge to increase the, the price. It deflated. It's deflating. So, of course, uh, as well, ETH 2.0 has already been exploited. BlockSec, where uh, a security company this discovered a replay exploit wherein one user minted 200 wrapped ETH and moved them through a bridge on the Gnosis chain. After completion, they replayed the message on the POW chain and managed to get an extra 200 ETH. <laughs> ETH, um, wrapped ETH, guys. So you see what I'm saying, guys? This is wild. Then as well, think long term. It's been over a decade since the Ethereum white paper was released. Time has not healed ETH flaws. It's no longer, it's no closer to scaling, still has stupid gas fees, and is full of sneaky scammers. Y'all, just something to consider. I'm not here to, you know, again, bear your bag, but it's an interesting opinion piece is coming out. Next up right here again for my XDC holders, I want you guys to understand and know there is more and more expansion that's happening for the XDC ecosystem and I really hope everyone that tunes into our channel recognizes the importance of the XDC uh, ecosystem. This news right here, XDC uh, network acquires 50 million. I'm going to be doing a little bit more of a deep dive for our premium members on this side really about this information here. Really good stuff though. Next up, I want to show you guys this, of course, guys. I mean, when it comes down to an exchange that we can definitely recommend, it would be Fair Desk. Okay, Fair Desk. This is made by some of the Binance executives and uh, people from the Morgan Stanley Group. Okay. So really good stuff. Trade fair and wiser. Now, the reason why I want to show you guys this is, and of course, we've been covering it for quite a while. Why? Because they're about security, performance, reliance, and support. Okay. One thing I want to let you guys know, of course, I am a user over here. been making my deposits and the bonuses have been accruing. Okay. Putting that there just to let you guys know we're in this thing, right? And as well, this is the best part. Okay. What Fair Desk is really offering you guys is a bonus. All right. First of all, you have your KYC bonus. You just complete the standard KYC and you get two dollars right but what i'm really working on and what i'm really liking is this deposit bonus where they'll back you up to 600 bucks okay 600 dollars all right so and as well there's a trading bonus you'll receive 15 dollars uh trading bonus once your trading volume actually reaches um uh, around 30,000 USDT. This is just your trading volume. You know, but long story short, you'll be getting that bonus as well. So I really like that. Of course, one of the best uh, parts about it really is this, this license right here, these key licenses. This is the reason why they're actually able to uh, provide you with that backing for 600. And as well, they actually have XRP trading. Like you guys are seeing here, US money service business license from the regulatory authorities. Yes, US Department of Treasury. So these are officially licensed and certified exchanges. OK, they also have a license as well in Canada. So guys, just consider there is a link in the description. Now, next up right here, I thought this was fascinating. OK, you have uh, Tomas Malinin, but he put this out saying I have a really bad deja vu uh, deja vu from 2008. During that summer, I often worried that so many people really did not know what was about to hit. Same now people live their lives without understanding that our financial world may shatter as early as next week. 
So guys, of course, um, I'm going to be probably doing a little bit more of a deep dive, but what we've been saying to our premium members and really exposing to them is how we're really on the precipice of a global recession and really how to prepare yourselves for that whole thing really interesting if you're able to have these deja vu moments if you find yourself being reminiscent of 2008 prepare yourselves okay history doesn't repeat itself but it often rhymes okay next up really important news for my cypherium holders i gotta look out for you on the public side right here doing some digging right we have the ceo from Cypherium, a founding member at the OMFIF, Digital Monetary Policy Institute, explains why interoperability is an important aspect of central bank digital currencies or CBDCs. Now, you guys can see this came out in July 2020, okay? I'm sure you guys were, re you know, recognize what was going on around then. Let's actually look right here at this actual, uh, this question, that was, these questions that were being asked. Why is it even necessary for digital currency or different digital uh, currencies to interoperate like you've recommended? Uh, Sky, the CEO, has said if CBDCs are going to gain adoption and global importance as we at Cypherium believe they will, these new digital fiat systems will need to communicate with their domestic economies, with other nations and with private crypto, which are quickly becoming legitimate global economic factors. Today, the governments of the world use financial policy to administer and administrate amongst each other. So CBDCs would bring this to the next level of efficiency. Look at this. So which projects are you involved with and why? Cypherium is heavily involved with the development of CBDC interoperability. Boom. So keep that in mind, guys. You know, if you're new to our channel, if you don't know what we're talking about, Cypherium is a Fed now service provider of the Federal Reserve is going to be introducing to the states a new payment system that's going to be 24 7 365 and the only DLT, the only blockchain, the only crypto that's involved in that service provider showcase is Cypherium. So they're letting you guys know that Cypherium heavily involved in CBDC interoperability, meaning the digital dollar, digital pound, digital yen, and they all have to be able to interoperate on the business side of things. This is mainly achieved through our presence as a founding member of the OMFIF Digital Monetary Inst Institute, which we've uh, released some premium uh, information to you guys when we've done our deep dives and look into it for yourself. If you're still on the fence about owning Cypherium, look into that for yourself. The, Mon the Monetary Institute, a London based think tank on central banking, the DMI has connected us with a number of central banks across Europe, which whom we have discussed the construction of novel CBDC structures, okay? Also as well, today we've revealed with you guys how the Cypherium CEO teamed up together with a Swiss national bank uh, banker. Guys, it's real. Through tools like CypherLink, Cypherium Connect, and Cypherium Validator, our network can link any two banking systems. Cypherium can support cross-chain transactions among any two CBDCs. This is a vital aspect of bringing CBDCs into a globalized um, financial climate. Okay, so I'll leave you guys a link so you can know a little bit more about that. Just to give you guys a little bit more information, Digital Monetary Institute, they're cooking. Okay, they're they're still they're still making sure you guys are up to date. All right, evolution of payment systems, blockchains in the future. Cypherium is a member of this, guys. Okay, keep that in mind. Founding member. Next up, guys, I want you to listen to this. We're getting into our main piece. I want you guys to hear this out. Okay, BG coming at you. Union. And MoneyGram, they're leaning in and using our tools to solve a, a payments problem. And this payments problem is measured truly in the trillions of dollars. So while we're on kind of, you know, mile marker one of a 26 mile marathon, we're definitely past the starting line. That was Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse on Power Lunch earlier today when I asked him about the future of Ripple and how XRP, the cryptocurrency, could be used. And according to BK, what you just heard Garlinghouse say is the biggest thing investors are missing about Ripple. BK's over at the Plaza to break it all down. Hey, Beeps. Hey, Melissa. Thanks for that. Yeah, so Brad had some interesting things to say, and I thought it was really important to break down what he's talking about and what the opportunity, at least that Brad sees, and I think you know, ultimately could be the bull case for, uh, for Ripple. So let's break it down. Talking about the size of the payment markets, according to McKinsey, it's about $155 trillion is the size of the market. So your total addressable market is massive. Right now, if you take a look at what it costs to move $155 trillion, it's about $31 billion, roughly around 20 basis points is what it's costing you. 
So if using Ripple, and this is from Ripple Stats, you could save about, according to them, about 60%. Well, how do they do that? So you use the Ripple Ledger plus the Ripple currency. And that's the key to this 60% right here. The reason why using the Ripple currency, if people start doing this, is good for is, is the way you save is because right now banks have to hold foreign currency everywhere in the world. They're called Nostro accounts. It's very cost intensive to have that inventory around the world. They can simply replace that foreign currency with XRP and they can save a lot of money on that. So let's take a look at what Ripple's been doing. Obviously, it's been down. I think we have a chart here. Yep. Obviously, down from the peaks up here, right? The whole crypto market has kind of gone sideways here. But what does Luis Yamada say? The bigger the base, the higher in space. In my view, you have to have people start using that XRP, that Ripple currency, in substitute for foreign currency. But that's the utility. That's the use case for Ripple, the currency. If that's the case, then that's a pretty nice base right Longer the base, higher in space. Good stuff. Check this out. Underselling the addressable market severely. Derivatives run into the quadrillions, okay? Keep that in mind, y'all. All right. Now we're getting into our main piece right here. Bank of International Settlements Global Bank total exposure to crypto is 0.01%. Let's look into the deets, right? Let's look into the deets. Uh, just really quickly so you guys can know, this is, of course, an official uh, publication, as you guys can see here, Basel 3 Monitoring Report, Basel 3. So I want to show you guys right here, just, you know, dig and comb through this really quickly so you guys can understand a little bit. Uh, about the bank's exposure to crypto assets. Now, I'll touch on this briefly. I'll probably deep dive into this on our premium. Uh, but to, to show you guys a little bit briefly, uh, so you guys can understand, Basel 3 represents that um, kind of like the emergency funds that will be needed in the case of that global in in the case of that global collapse in the case of all of that happening we actually have to make sure that there is a protocol in place to make sure that you know we have those emergency funds make sure that the banks have uh, enough of that capital on hand just in case any kind of thing were to happen so in this Basel three monitoring report they're monitoring all the banks and how they're really doing in that whole thing they have here the bank's exposure to crypto assets now i want you guys to keep this in mind i'm going to be breaking it down with you all about how they've contrived this framework and how they've you know been there but i want you guys to keep in mind reported reported okay that is it possible that some banks could have more crypto than they have reported okay could they have more exposure than they have reported so um Right here, I want you guys to see since 2018, the Basel Committee has been pursuing a multi pronged set of uh, analytical, supervisory, and policy initiatives, re initiatives related to crypto assets. As part of this work, a new crypto asset data collection template was introduced with the current Basel 3 monitoring exercise based on N21 data. Now, keep it in mind as well, if you really want to do some research, Basel 4 is what's supposed to be really something for the future, okay? Basel 4 is already in, in development, if you will, and it'll possibly have its place, like Protocol 20, right? XLM holders. So uh, I want to show you guys this. The template was designed to support the committee's two uh, documents on uh, prudential treatment of exposures, which were published uh, June 10 and June 30th. Just to show you guys really quickly, June 10, uh, this one right here, you guys can see June 10, Basel commits a uh, council on prudential treatment of exposure. Long story short, they split crypto assets into two groups. Group one, uh, crypto assets fulfill a set of classifications, conditions, and are eligible for treatment under the framework. This includes uh, tokenized traditional assets and stable coins. Group two are cryptos such as Bitcoin that don't fulfill the classical conditions since these pose additional risks and higher and higher risks. They would be subject to a new conservative prudential treatment. OK, and as well, you guys could see here the second one, June 30th, 2022. That's this right here. Long story short, you guys could see it right there. The Basel Committee publishes their second document on the uh, on how they're going to treat them. The updated proposal provides more details on the proposed standard and includes new elements such as infrastructure risks to cover new and evolved um, risk of DLT adjustments to risk sen sensitivity and overall gross limits. So they're recognizing rapid uh, evolution and volatile nature. 
uh, they're going to continue to closely monitor it. So what I want you guys to see uh, really is that, look, small portion of banks reporting crypto uh, exposure at the end of 21. You guys could see only 10 American banks, seven European ones, and then just two uh, from the rest of the world. These are numbers of banks reporting crypto asset exposures. OK, just report it. I want you guys to keep that in mind. Uh, and I'll leave you guys a link so you can see a little bit more into it. But again, this is it. Reported crypto asset exposures are primarily composed of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and a multitude of instruments with either Bitcoin and Ethereum as the underlying crypto asset. All right. Focusing on the top 20 reported crypto assets by exposure, other significant crypto assets include Polkadot, XRP, Cardano, Solana, Litecoin, and Stellar. These exposures would likely be classified as Group 2 under the current proposal uh, of the Basel Committee. So, so you guys can see it. There's more Bitcoin exposure here. But I want you guys to see what they mean by exposure, exposure, and what exactly it is that they're speaking on. So really, crypto holding and lending. This is really the exposure variety of assets directly or indirectly exposing banks. We have crypto holding and lending, clearing and client market making services, custody wallet insurance. This includes providing custody wallet insurance services for crypto assets and facilitating client activities of products with underlying crypto assets. This could be self-directed, manager directed. You get what I'm saying? So you guys could keep that in mind how these banks already they're showing that they already have these these activities, but I personally believe that the exposure is going to continue to rise with time. All right. Seriously, look at that. The most that they're saying here, providing custody wallet services. This is the most exposure. So I personally think we're going to be seeing more and more of that happening with uh, throughout these banks. But like I said, I'll leave you guys a link. This thing is chock full of some pretty good, pretty good information. Last thing I want to leave you guys is this turn that hurt into hustle turn that pain into paper all right you guys have been given a purpose you've been given a time to be alive guys do not allow uh anxiety and depression to throw you off of your square all right you are meant to shine and to be a blessing all right but guys i appreciate you making it to this part of the video please hit that like button hit the subscribe and as well hit the bell so you don't miss out on any of these updates but i'll see you later peace